<clears throat> Hello, everybody. It's George from Ireland. So thank you for coming to my channel. Uh, anyway, in this video, I'm going to address perhaps the most contentious claim made at the Conservative and Unionist Party conference that's closing tomorrow. Alas and alack, didn't make it up there. Um, because Lee Anderson, the um, uh, deputy chairman of the Conservative Party, made a highly controversial statement. And this is in a conference which was actually packed with tendentious statements. I know politics is about disagreement, but um, it seems that uh, the Conservative strategy now is wedge issues, as in uh, culture war. We'll say to start one. Well, there already is one. Um, and to some extent, that's good that we have, have a... Um, a broad field of debate, people that can express themselves. There are issues that are worth discussing. We shouldn't have a totalitarian system. We shouldn't have some, some mindless big tent. Um, there are things that ought to be debated and um, the world be decided. OK, but there'll probably always always be a minority. And it, how tedious it would be if the world were monochromatic. We all agreed with each other. I mean, I often want the entire population of the globe to agree with me because I'm right. And we'd be freer and happier if everybody did what I wanted, which is often for them to do what they want to do. Uh, but there are too many who disagree. Anyway, so Lee Anderson, he made the highly contestable claim that there's no poverty in the United Kingdom. I suppose it depends what your what your bar is for that. What's your definition? The poverty line is the poor you always have with you. Um, so saith our Lord and Saviour. I'm not a big man for the good book, as you may have observed. The other thing is because me thinks that poverty is calculated uh, by reference to whatever the medium income is. If it's a third of that, I, I don't know what the mathematical formula is. So therefore, as we're always going to get richer, that we will always have some people who happen for, to fall below, below that, even in the most affluent country like Monaco or Luxembourg, but it might be a very, very small proportion of people. So some people who absolutely refuse to work are so severely physically and mentally disabled, they're incapable of um, self-provision. Uh, um, moreover, we just have different standards. We think that being poor is like not having your own laptop or something. So, uh, but is he right? I guess you might say, oh, come off it. Compared to Niger or Mali or Afghanistan, the United Kingdom doesn't have poverty. When's the last time someone died of malnutrition in the United Kingdom? Is it decades ago? I don't know. I heard tales of people in the 1980s who couldn't afford to heat and eat and died of malnutrition. I I'm not sure if that's true. And obviously there are homeless people on the street. I've never heard of someone dying through homelessness as exposure. I remember in Romania hearing one rather gelid night, two um, um, homeless men died of exposure. It was minus 18 on the streets. So, uh, but you'd, you'd hope that uh, the minimum standard would be a little, a little bit higher than that. There'd be some sort of social floor. And I hear anecdotal tales of people skipping meals, only having two meals. But surely most adults only have two meals a day unless they do a physically demanding job. I know I'm the worst offender you know, having three meals a day and three at night as well. Um, what, what else do they have? I mean, to have a roof over your head, enough to eat, you know, a pair of shoes, uh, a change of clothes. These are, I suppose, the necessities of life. Um, if you don't have those, that's, that, that, that really is poverty. Uh, difficulty paying the bills. Is anyone who actually goes without water, electricity or whatever? I don't think so. So I think Lee Anderson is broadly correct. That was deeply unfashionable to say so. Um, because uh, he said back in the 1970s was real poverty. So Lee Anderson is born in 1967 in Nottinghamshire, where he's lived his entire life. So he left school at 16, as was the norm in those days. He grew up in a proletarian family uh, and he went down the mines, which was handsomely remunerated, partly because it was danger money. It was hazardous because of mine collapse or whatever. I think the old canary thing in the coal might have gone out decades before. But these were close-knit communities. Everybody knew everybody. People are not proud to do it. Sons of the soil. I think it was really macho to do it. And so if you're 16, had no qualifications whatsoever, um, it was actually quite lucrative. And so we did that was member of the National Union of Miners, which is led, led, led by an unapologetic and unreconstructed Stalinist, um, Arthur Scargill. Scargill was this Yorkshireman who'd been in the Communist Party of Great Britain, who was an outspoken defender of Stalinist atrocities and obviously wanted to open concentration camps for enemies of the people of the United Kingdom. So Lee Anderson was um, one of the strikers in the 1984-85 minor strike um, that came to grief. And that really was uh, sound of the death knell of uh, the coal industry in the United Kingdom. There's virtually no coal mining left. And all right, it was moribund anyway, but perhaps it, it, just, it just speeded it up. Um, 
So he joined the Labour Party and obviously um, the Labour Party grew out of the trades union movement and he was latterly a Labour councillor. It was even in the Labour Party under um, Jeremy Corbyn, but um, he was in a way some space small c conservative, but all right, he wanted a well-funded NHS, higher tax on the super wealthy to provide better public services for ordinary people and the police to be tough on crime and maybe long long prison sentences for violent offenders, things like that. He would have probably seen that as all common sense and that but uh, you know, there they should be good pensions and there should be plenty of child benefit and so that there should be uh, a good public um, uh, transport system, publicly owned if necessary, publicly funded. And, and that was it. Um, but he might agree with the Conservatives on more and more things. The Conservatives would agree more that the police should actually police, detect and deter crime and not mainly be about the enforcement of, an, uh, of a far left ideology. But ironically, that's what it's become under the Conservative Party. The police spend most of their time going to these racism courses or trans courses. And, you know, the racism industry is, is making a mint laughing all the way to the bank because every, anybody in the public sector, even the private sector, has to spend so much time in these incredibly expensive courses where they will have this ultra left ideology rammed down their throat and there'll be language policing and anyone to to the um, right of the Labour Party is evil um, and Britain is racist, racist, racist. Uh, so some people have got um, sick and tired of hearing all this twaddle. They're fed up with the back teeth about having their heritage trashed and their country insulted. Uh, but anyway, 2018, he made a, um, a, co a controversial comment about um, traveller sites being built in, in Nottinghamshire that he didn't want this to happen. So he was under investigation from the Labour Party. He defected the Conservative and Unionist Party. So he's a man with genuinely working class roots and would appeal to floating voters. He was then selected as a Conservative candidate in Ashfield, Nottinghamshire, previous part of the coal mine. One time it was the seat of Jeff Hoon, who was Defence Secretary uh, at the time of the Iraq War, a Labour MP, obviously, son of a railwoman. Um, anyway, so uh, so um, he was returned to Parliament, Lee Anderson, and he's become a bit of a hero for the for for the um, Conservative Party. You know, he's not met metropolitan, he's not small L liberal, um, and uh, that's it. He's seen as a common sense man, the voice of the proletariat. Um, so very much a man of 2019, uh, a Brexiteer. Um, emblematic of those people, those working class voters um, in northern English seats, and all right, um, Nottingham says not, not that far north, who came over to the Conservative Party because of BBC, Boris, Brexit and Corbyn. Uh, and so it, it actually um, carries more weight when someone like his, his uh, says it, that really that there's no poverty back in the United Kingdom. And he's willing to be outspoken. Uh, his, his trademark bluntness has won him many accolades, but also he's been demonized too, saying that if asylum seekers, if the, the standard of accommodation is not up to the five star hotel standard they're used to in Syria and Somalia and so on, they can fuck off back to France where they were, where they were accommodated beforehand. Um, so is this kind of um, candor and shooting from the lip that um, some find very refreshing and others find very disturbing, but that is Lee Anderson. But will he keep his Ashfield seat in the next election? I think it improbable. Right. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Goodbye.